let's get on with our first topic of the day. And the first topic of the day is this open letter penned by Uber CEO Dara Khaz Rashahi and the Rockefeller Foundation chief uh, Rajiv J. Shah. And the title of the letter is American Workers Need a Better Safety Net. And you know what? This time, I'm not even going to... I think it's been going on long enough. I, I don't care about the demonetization anymore. We're going to actually use... We're going to say the actual C word. So, I bet you have viewers have been waiting for me to do this for a while. The COVID-19 crisis has crippled America's economy, bringing unemployment to its highest level since the Great Depression. The sudden shift in economic fortunes has awoken most Americans to the downsides of the U.S. labor model. In addition to the coronavirus pandemic, current events and new attention to an old problem of systematic racism systems and their, eff and their effect on black lives and livelihoods have stirred in a conviction that we must renew and not simply restore the pre-crisis status quo. Our economy has fundamentally changed. We will have to change with it. In the decades since the 2008 financial crisis, productivity in the United States has risen, but real wages have not, making it tough for people to save. Even before the current crisis hit, nearly 80% of families said they were living paycheck to paycheck with no ability to withstand an emergency. About 40% of Americans had less than $400 in savings. With the COVID pandemic, one in four American workers has filed for unemployment over the past 10 weeks. More than half the workforce has either lost a job or some income owing to illness or closures stemming from the virus. Today, 21 million Americans are not only out of work, but have also lost access to basic support like health care. And many who are still working, especially at jobs labeled essential, must choose between feeding their families and protecting their health. Giving, the, giving people the ability to get through tough times is critical if we want the economy to be stronger and more resilient. And our current labor framework, which provides a safety net to some kinds of workers but not others, is not up to the task. It's a fairly long letter, but I think it's worth reading the whole thing. Our labor systems were changing even before this economic crisis. Over the past decade, tech platforms, including Uber, connected millions of people to quick access to work. But the pre-COVID status quo of safety net benefits supporting workers, particularly independent workers, has been neither sufficiently flexible nor sufficiently sturdy. America's current travels, uh, travails have made it clear that we need wider worker protection that don't limit benefits to one legal classification of work. I think it's supposed to be doesn't limit, but you know. For more than a century, labor laws have created a false choice between independence and protection. It's a choice that no longer serves workers and must be reformed. A new nation survey of 1,200 likely voters conducted for the Bipartisan Policy Center, BPC, and funded by the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, Rockefeller, uh, Foundation shows most Americans agree. Three in four Americans, 76%, say they are not content to simply return to the same safety net systems that existed prior to the COVID-19 economic crisis. The desire for change was articulated by independents, Democrats, and Republicans alike. About the same share, three in four, support more pragmatic solutions. They want fixes to the safety net such as unemployment assistance reform, the ability to take their benefits from job to job, and expanded family leave benefits. A large number also want a rollback in rules regulating certain trades so that they can take their skills across state lines without having to be re-licensed. Such regulatory reform would also allow ride-share workers, including Uber drivers, to more easily find work wherever they go across the state lines. In the current crisis, it has been heartening to see, for the first time ever, independent workers becoming eligible for unemployment assistance through the Federal CARES Act. That marks an important recognition that our economy has fundamentally changed and that choosing independent work need not mean foregoing basic protections that every worker deserves. At the same time, COVID has forced employers to be more flexible, allowing more people to work from home and on their own schedule. There is some disagreement on the best next steps, including between us. Uber has opposed efforts by legislators to require workers to choose between employment with some benefits but limited flexibility and independent work with more freedom but without basic benefits. 
we believe we should instead raise the standards for independent work so workers can have the best of both worlds. This includes providing these workers with benefits and protections that they can depend on when they're injured at work, get sick, want to take time off, or retire. The Rockefeller Foundation sees policies that require gig company, sorry, gig economy companies to classify workers as employees as an important step in re- recognizing the need for worker benefits no matter where you work and pushing these companies to take on more of that responsibility. But despite that disagreement, both of us agree what matters most is changing the status quo and working together to find a bold new way to fundamentally change the day-to-day reality for hard-working Americans. A good place to start is with a modernized federal framework that mandates protections nationwide, whether provided by governments or employers, but available to everyone, so benefits are portable across the country. This crisis has laid bare long-term systematic problems in our economy and our society, Change comes slowly when the lives of those less affected by hardships are easy, but but becomes imperative during times of true hardship for all. The Rockefeller Foundation and BPC survey shows that even in our hyper-partisan era, the majority of Americans want to change how our laws protect the average worker. The path to recovery status starts with recognizing that just as our notions of work have evolved, so must the rules and benefits surrounding that work. So, yeah. That's um, that's a whole bunch of horse donkey right there, isn't it? Just a whole, whole bunch of ho- horse donkey. In fact, uh, what do all of you guys think about this so far? Oh, driver man's here, and Naz the gig accountant. Accountant. Well, no one's commenting on this so far, so I guess I'll go back. Keep in mind, guys, comment during the video. We will address it later on. But let's now look at this open letter. Because as usual, this is Uber, and they're now doing it in connection with, in joint connection with Rockefeller Foundation, that, hey, things need to be better, and things should be better, and we need to change, and I'm going to tell you why none of what's written here matters. First of all, that COVID-19 has crippled America's economy and bringing unemployment to its highest levels since the Great Depression. Yep, no kidding, Sherlock. What? What are you going to do about it? They say our economy has fundamentally changed. We have to change with it. Well, okay. What's your solution? And, uh, well, they're talk. Here's something that's interesting. The first thing they do, they talk about how 80% of families are living paycheck to paycheck with no ability to withstand an emergency. And about less than 40% of Americans had less than $400 in savings. They cite how worker one in four workers file for unemployment, and you know what the what the solution to this might be? Well, maybe it would be if companies paid their employees better, maybe they could actually save money. And since Uber has a history of cutting rates, and in fact continues to cut rates this very day, I don't think I feel feel like they have any right to talk about whether or not their families are struggling. You know what? Their drivers are struggling from low pay. They've had ample time to fix that. They aren't doing it. Now then, they go to talk about how the labor systems were changing before the economic crisis. Well, yeah, because Uber and Lyft and Postmates and DoorDash and all those companies took, created a line of work that they said was independent, but it's really not independent. You're employees. You're still living under their boot, if you will. And they make the rules. They set the rates. They set the terms. And the only thing you can do is get on and off whenever you want. But they're saying, hey, our labor systems are changing. No, the thing is, they're changing because you're changing it. And that's why they're changing. Now, here's the rich thing. For more than a century, labor laws have created a false choice between independence and protection. It's a choice that no longer serves workers and must be reformed. I don't think that's necessarily the case. If you get a really good union job, guess what? You can have have protection and you make good money. Like... And you know what? A lot of unions actually do provide flexibility because here's the thing. You have special needs. You need to work so many days or work certain hours because you have a kid. You know, a union and a state, well, maybe not a state job, but a union will protect that. A union will go to bat for you during things like that. So, you know, it's not necessarily a choice anymore. And yeah, um, if you want independence and you give up some form of protection that is true but 
that's just kind of how it's always been. It's a choice that no longer serves workers and must be be reformed. Well, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Because here's the thing. I agree with the idea that you make your own way in life. Now, some people are built dealt better cards than others. Sometimes you know someone and that gets you a job that other people might not have access to. There are advantages you can take care of that you happen to luck into. But for the most part, hey, you know what? You can be very, very successful and independent. But when you're independent, you don't have protections. That's just the way it is. Well, maybe in that case, protection is more important to you than independence. So pick protection. But, you know, you have to make a choice. You can't you can't be 15 forever where it's like, hey, I want to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And when things don't go my way, well, you got to take care of me. No, no, no. That is not how this works. It's not how it works. You either have to grow up. And you have to strive for your independence or you go someplace where you are protected. Now, le- here's the thing. <laughs> I-, I love how they bring up the unemployment during um, the COVID-19 crisis. Because we all know that Uber, you know, Dar Khosrow Shahi wrote an open letter for this to President Trump saying, hey, don't forget the gig workers. Like, don't forget our drivers. They need to be protected too. Well, Uber's not doing anything to protect them. Uber is not paying into the unemployment system except for their own direct employees. Uber is doing nothing to help the drivers, but they are expecting the government to protect them. And you know what the government did? The government bailed Uber out on this one. And they're going like, hey, you see, it's it's humbling to see the government care so much. You know, the government just did not want, you know, thousands of people without any income whatsoever. That's why they actually took this into consideration. They did something about it. But don't think this is a forever thing. You think the government's going to forget about that? They won't. They're going to remember bailing Uber out and Uber didn't pay one penny to help these employees. So it's rich that they bring it up. And there is some disagreement. Of course there is. Uber has opposed efforts by legislators to require workers to choose between employment with some benefits, but limited flexibility and independent work with more freedom, but without basic benefits. You know, this is a lie that Uber keeps telling everyone. No, that is not what they are forcing you to choose between. They are saying these rules mean you are independent. These rules mean you are not independent. And Uber's stance is, yeah, we want the rules that says you're not independent, but we want it to mean independent. So that's where we're heading. That's what we're fi- fighting. We can make the changes so that it is very clear that our drivers are independent. And we could give up a lot of control of those drivers. But we don't want to give up control of those drivers. That's what is going on. So that is why Uber has opposed efforts by legislators that requ- to require workers. No, they're not... The government's not making Uber choose between employees and independent contractors. They're just saying, Uber, what you're doing is not independent. It has to be like this to be independent, and that's what Uber is fighting. Now then, they continue to talk about systematic change and everything like that. But you know what's really bugs me about all this? This is not the first time Dar Khosrow Shahi has written open letters. For example, here's an open letter that he wrote with Logan Green and John Zimmer of Lyft basically saying that, hey, we need to change the way workers make money. We need to have a fair system and we need help doing it. Now, Uber and Lyft could easily change the system themselves, but in every situation, it's like, no, no, it's the government's job to change the system and tell us what to do. It's funny how Uber and Lyft were like leaders in the rideshare revolution, if you will. And now, when it's like people are really, you know, do something, like change. They're like, hey, we'd like to, but it's the government shop. And hey, we're going to write an open letter about it. Here's another thing. Uh, Uber, famous letter Uber wrote to Donald Trump asking for benefits and protections for the drivers. Now, Uber could be providing, you know, the benefits and protection. They could. They certainly seem to have the money to. They're bragging that they have $10 billion. They could do this to take care of their drivers, but they don't want to. Better the government do that. Oh, and of course, who can forget 
um, Uber's letter to the Londoners after they lost their license to operate in London. Like, we can do better. We can do be better. We want you better. You know what? This was this was three years ago. You know what, Dara? I don't care about your letters anymore. You know, take these letters and shove them. Shove them where the sun don't shine. Shove them where the excrement that you spew on a daily basis comes from. Because you know what? You are the freaking CEO of Uber. You are allowed to make changes. If you don't like that your drivers are not protected, hey, you know what? You do something about it. If you don't like what your drivers are getting paid, hey, you do something about it. Hey, if you don't like the fact that the government is saying these are employees, say, hey, what can we do so that they stay independent? They will give you those guidelines and you can follow them. But stop with these open letters. They don't mean anything at this point. They don't. It's just you trying to pontificate, if you will. And what you're doing is you're skidding on a podium. And you're getting in front of the audience and saying, we are fighting for you drivers, we are fighting for the public, we are fighting for change. But you know what? When you look between the lines of all these letters and all the things you are asking, a rational person should be able to point to many of the things you bring up and say, uh, hey, if you're not happy with that, why don't you enact the change? Like, why does the government need to step in first? Before you do something. Remember when that girl got into a car that she thought was an Uber and she it unfortunately wasn't and she lost her life? That is not Uber's fault. It clearly wasn't. But you know what happened? Uber came up with a new verifying system. They started the whole say my name thing, you know, like Breaking Bad. And they did something to ensure that that mistake had a much smaller chance of happening again. They pushed a new system to protect people. The government didn't need to tell them to do that. They just did it. So why is it when it comes to paying for drivers and their benefits and their unemployment and the way that they work so that they can keep their independence while still making good money, heck, even just a situation where Uber can make sure their drivers are not working paycheck to paycheck. Why can't Uber just make those changes themselves? Why does the government need to come in and figure that out? I don't know, but you know what? I'm curious what you think about it. So, hey, what what do you think? Do you, what do you think about all of this? Do you even believe these letters anymore? Do you think that they're a waste of time reading them? I'd love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly.